Okay, so I mentioned what you'd be doing with some of these images. You know, it's basically just adding a little framing creativity to your videos. And I'll just show you a few examples here. So here I found this 1970-ish looking television set online, which I can easily crop out the screen area and then overlay that into one of my ScreenFlow projects. So I just sketched that image, brought it into Photoshop, and using my eraser and magic wand, I'm going to try and get as close to the edge as I can, making it smooth as possible. I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing that, but we should be able to make it pretty good. What I also have to do in Photoshop is to make sure that this TV is not the actual background layer, because when you do import an image into, into Photoshop, it is the background layer. So I have to make this a layer, and then as soon as I start cropping out some of the content in the image, you'll see that that checkered background uh, appears. You've got to see that in Photoshop especially because that's what transparency looks like in an image editor. When I see that checkered background I know I've got some transparency happening. Okay so let me just save this file as a ping image in my folder and uh, okay and we're gonna close Photoshop. I'm gonna open up a ScreenFlow project. Okay previously I made a recording of a video from YouTube. This one is an interesting lecture by Earl Nightingale called The Boss. I just recorded a couple minutes of it. I squared off the screen capture and then I just simply exported that file as a dot move file. Okay so now I opened up a new screen flow project and I put in a conservative gray background here. I've also imported that dot move file that I made of Earl Nightingale and I'll just bring that into the timeline. I love this guy's low voice. You should check him out on YouTube. I want to tell you a little story which will, well, which could make a wonderful difference. Now in I'm life. just going to bring in my ping file. And I'll just drop it on the timeline here. It usually ends up on the bottom, but then we'll just change the uh, tracks and navigate it to on top because I want that TV screen on top of everything else. So now I'm just resizing the TV here. I want to make a full screen. That looks cool. Earl looks pretty good there, I have to say. Okay, so now I just want to manipulate both layers so that one is behind the other and the sizing is Hello. And the sizing looks correct. I want to tell you a little story which will well, which could make a wonderful you know, it looks pretty sharp. I could have went over the edges of the TV in Photoshop a bit more, but for the purpose of this video, you see what I'm trying to do here. percent of all the working people in the world, you're to be congratulated. If you don't know about the things I'm going to say, all right. Well, let's try something else with Earl, and I will put him in one of these uh, MP3 players. Again, we'll just go into Photoshop. I've removed the screen area. I'm going to save this file as a ping image. Now we'll open up ScreenFlow again. I'll get rid of the TV timeline and I'll bring the MP3 player image in. Actually, you know what? Since the background of my MP3 image is white, I'm going to go ahead and change the background of my ScreenFlow canvas to white as well. Then I don't have to worry about the images clashing and not looking real. Looks like we just updated Earl Nightingale by about 40 years just because he's sitting in this mp3 player now. Now you can see how the entire presentation or your entire video will change by, you know, using some creative graphics. Okay, let's try a couple more. We'll do something a bit more funky. Here I found this great picture of Mount Rushmore on Flickr, and I'll take out this face here. I don't know whose face that is. It must be Bill Clinton's. But I don't want it to have sharp edges, so I'm going to use the feathering edge and just draw out, you know, the structure of this guy's face. And then, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to save that image again as a ping and then import into ScreenFlow. Okay, well, Earl's head is kind of fidgeting around here, 
and um, you know this effect actually so this effect didn't actually work out as good as I thought it would but you get the idea anyway you can probably pop a lot of things back there that might be more suitable how about this one let's bring Earl Nightingale into the Toronto Rogers Center for a baseball game I could see this thing kind of being used if you have a sports theme website cars your clothes he pays for your vacations and puts your kids through school he pays your doctor bills and writes every this one is cool too where I put him in an historic movie theater and like he's on the screen now and you know it's kind of dramatic feel to it don't know about the things I'm going to say when you think about using some of these creative images, you want to sort of do them tastefully and not overdo it because people get tired of this kind of stuff really quickly. I would sort of either use this kind of thing as like an introduction or, uh, you know, to get a point across in your video or when the video is ending or, you know, just, uh, you know, to help sort of build the theme of your video. But you want to be using the full dimensions of your video because that's why you know that's why you're making these nice HD size videos people want full size videos so you don't want your whole video to run and then you have this little dinky section within the video that's the only active part while people have to stare at this image for the whole video that's just gonna be dumb and counter creative it's like wow I got an ideal I'm gonna use it for the whole video no that's really not creative that's gonna be irritating Here's another one where you can use for some sort of travel video. Most cities have some sort of famous billboard or screen that you can use to illustrate some inter interesting facts about that area or that city. And then check this one out. Here I'm squeezing Earl into a GPS monitor, but you'll notice that the GPS is kind of on an angle. Well, you can make that look more realistic in ScreenFlow because you can manipulate the angle of your video and then also use these axis handles here to play around with, with the perspective of it as well. And now you can see how just playing with the positioning and the perspective makes the video look much more realistic coming in through that GPS monitor. There, now that looks really good if you got a car theme or some sort of auto review or GPS review. No, this could be a very realistic way to introduce your video. Also missing a big percentage of the greatest joy in life. I want to talk about your boss and your relationship with Okay, those are just a few tricks with ping images. Hope to see some of these come up in some of your videos too because there's virtually no end to the type of creative things you can combine just, you know, finding things on the internet to bring into your video. You and your boss. Who is your boss? You have only one. And every working person, from the president of the largest corporation to the shoeshine boy, has the same boss. He is simply the customer.